Hello everybody, this is Fiona from SchoolNet greeting you and welcoming you to a series of webinars from past winners and finalists in the Partners in Learning Forum in South Africa. Today we have Louise Clark from St. Cyprian's in Cape Town presenting highlights from the project she and her colleague Kim Jackson entered in 2011. Their project was a grade 4 literature project called Tollbooth Phantom. Kim and Louise were winners in South Africa and again at the Middle East and Africa finals in Jordan in 2011. This enabled them to participate in the Global Forum in Washington DC. Over to you Louise. Hello, um, could you please let me know if you can hear me? Oh brilliant. Um, it takes a little while just so you know for the transition handover to happen, so just be patient. <laughs> um, uh, Fiona, how do I start the presentation that I loaded? Um, well, hello everybody, um, I'm Louise Clark, I teach at St Cyprian's School in Cape Town and I had the most fantastic year last year uh, with SchoolNet and Microsoft um, and I just would like to tell you a bit about the project that I entered and how I came about the project and um, how my partner and I, Kim, who was uh, working with me at the time, how we decided to go through this entire journey. Um, so we're both grade four teachers, Kim and I, um, and we work at an all-girls school in Cape Town. Um, but what we wanted to do was to really get our girls enthusiastic about reading and writing. Um, they were quite competent at it, but really, really unenthusiastic. And so we came across a book called The Phantom Tollbooth. We said to the girls that if you can imagine it, you can write it. And that's the premise we gave them to start this whole project off. Um, so when asked the problem that we faced, it wasn't so much of a problem, it was more of a just really wanting to get our girls into the idea and into the headspace that they could be writers themselves. Um, the project involved reading the first chapter of The Phantom Tollbooth together, in which uh, there's a little boy called Milo. And Milo is bored by everything around him. Um, school, life at home, everything. It's not of interest to him. Until one day in his bedroom appears a magical package and inside that package is a toll booth. And the toll booth takes him to the lands beyond. And that's where the first chapter ends. So the second part was where we got our girls together in a group and they had to discuss together and work together to decide what happened to Milo in these lands beyond. Um, we deliberately put the girls in mixed ability groups um, and our way from their friendship circles to test them to see if they could work together. Um, and the results were quite interesting. They did bash heads a lot. We did have a lot of tears. We had a lot of tra tantrums, um, but the results were really worth it. They then had to storyboard um, their ideas in a series of pictures, and each group member was responsible for a picture. So it was a shared responsibility, not, no one, not one person could take over. Um, and then they had to decide and create together a script that could be then match those pictures they'd drawn. They recorded themselves um, uh, on the computers, uh, again, again, in groups, uh, each reading a part of the scripts they'd given. And then using Windows Movie Maker, they put the pictures with the scripts and sound effects and animations to their movies to produce their own movie. Um, as any primary school teacher will know, um, it's very hard to limit yourself to one subject when doing a project. And this subject really spilled over into all areas. 
In art, the girls made maps of what they believed the land beyond looked like um, and really looked at characters. Some of the characters there in, in the picture you can see are, are my favourite. There's Dodecahedron, the character with 12 faces, and King Azaz, the king of letters. In design technology, the girls made their own mysterious packages out of shoeboxes and inside they created um, their own model toll booths. And uh, the, we also added into those boxes their own little adventures um, in the form of books that we sent off to local schools in the area. Hopefully then they get the idea and they would take on the project themselves. Um, in natural science, as Milo went through the lands beyond, looking at all the different things and experiencing the world with his senses, we too did a senses science project and the girls did taste tests and feely boxes and everything and anything to really show how their senses worked. And in social science, we looked at um, great leaders of the world and um, how to be um, in control and but work as part of a team. Uh, they looked at uh, castles as well in history and what you can see there is, is a graphic model of a castle um, using a program called Google SketchUp that they then used to import into a, a Google Earth to say where they would have their castle and why they would put it there. So we were asked by Microsoft to outline our out learning outcomes. Um, we looked particularly at speech and reading as one of them to see when the girls recorded their voices whether they could read with fluency and expression. They had to plan, write and draft their, their entire work. Um, we looked at improving their language and spelling. Um, and then also, more importantly, I think, is to work on what we know about our year group. So we had to expand their ability to work as part of a team. We had a, very, a group of very egocentric children who couldn't work together. We looked at furthering their interest in reading and writing because they all came into the classroom saying it was something that did, they weren't interested in. Um, to extend their vocabulary and to show them how IT um, is more of a tool than a separate subject and they do come tend to think that you go to IT lesson and that's your IT and then you come to English and that's where you've got to write that they didn't really see the link between the two um, the 21st century skills uh, were one of the things we really looked at they had to work as part of a team we wanted to activate their pre-knowledge things that they did previously in grade 3 and show how you build on them in grade four. They worked um, with their own time allocation. They had specific tasks to complete in each English lesson, um, which they had to adhere to. And if they didn't, then there were penalties. They had to make sure they stuck to it. Self-regulation, they had to work together collaboratively and compromise. And also using um, IT on the internet, we looked at finding songs and recording their narrative and and uploading things onto the school's website and intranet. Collaboration um, was huge. Um, they had to negotiate, they had to share, which is a big thing for uh, girls of this age. Um, but we tried to make it fair by each week or each lesson, we gave the responsibility of being a leader, a scribe, um, or a negotiator. Uh, to a different person so that they each got to experience what it was like to be that person. Um, beyond the classroom, we, we took their work and we uploaded it onto the intranet, uh, their movies themselves, but we really wanted to take it that day, that way, that bit further. So we had a theme day. Parents, um, community people, everyone involved were invited to theme day. We had their work on display. We premiered their movies. Um, we had red carpet and popcorn and printed invitations. It was a big, big shindig and the kids loved it. Um, as I said, their box, boxes and books were sent out to local community schools. And one thing that isn't on this slide is we then linked with a school in our area, uh, a, a local school, and our girls 
went over to teach their children how to use Movie Maker. And that was something really fantastic to see, um, to see them teaching other children how to do it. Um, Google SketchUp I've spoken about. They scanned in their own work and recorded their own voices. They used Movie Maker. And to also get them into the idea of comprehension, but in a fun way, we use Microsoft Mouse Mischief, um, which is a fantastic free tool. It's an add-in for PowerPoint. If anyone can get it, it's really something I would recommend. Um, and it's great for assessment of their reading skills. We were asked to describe in the competition why Kim and I believed ourselves to be innovators. And I think these pictures say it all. We weren't the innovators. The children were. Um, you have really, really did see their projects come to life and their writing come to life. I'm very proud of what the girls achieved. And um, when we went off to Washington this year, they honestly all did think that they were movie stars uh, because of their work. And that really did make me a very proud teacher. Um, I don't really know what else to say. Uh, if there are any questions, please do write, um, and I'll just wait and see if there are any. <laughs> that was Louise Clark from St. Cyprian's in Cape Town. We'd like to thank you very much for your clear and interesting presentation, Louise. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you for listening in.